but at this point we're focusing on completion of the trial and being in a position to present all the data to the FDA and potentially having a label extension for Rancel in this deadly disease. Mesoblast is using its proprietary technology platform to develop and commercialize innovative allogenic cellular medicines to treat complex diseases resistant to conventional standard of care. Mesoblast also has an extensive global intellectual property portfolio and proprietary manufacturing processes. Here to discuss more is CEO Dr. Silvio Etescu. Silvio, welcome to TCN TV. Nice to be here. Sylvie, the Mesoblast share price rallied strongly, fueled by news that the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA Advisory Committee, had voted overwhelmingly on the effectiveness of Mesoblast lead cell product candidate, Ryan Seal, for treating children with steroid refractory acute graft versus host disease, a life-threatening complication of a donor bone marrow transplant for blood cancer. Now, in your opinion, does the current Mesoblast share price reflect the possible risk return outcomes for the company over the coming months? I, I think um, that we've got a, a lot of very important milestones coming up uh, and uh, critical um, crystallizing events for the company. Um, we were very pleased by how the, the advisory panel meeting went. Clearly the, the experts saw that the product was effective, was safe, potentially life saving in children with this very dreadful, devastating disease. Uh, and we're looking forward to receiving approval from the FDA. And if approved, the product will be launched in the fourth quarter in the US. So we um, are looking forward to, to having the first product with revenues in the US market. If that's the case, then I think the way to look at this company is what other, what other indications are we likely to get approval for beyond GVHD? That's the first of many potential applications. So of the Mesoblast products now undergoing phase three US Food and Drug Administration trials, the closest to market is Ryan Seal. The FDA, um, as we said, is due to make a decision on approval at the end of this month. And if it's approved, Mesoblast has stated that it will make it available as quickly as possible. This could then open the way for sales of this product in the US market, as you mentioned, um, from December this year. So if this occurs, how quickly will US hospitals start using this product? Look, I think the day after approval, this product is gonna be in, in the hospitals. We've already got a sales force uh, on the ground in the US, about 20 people. Uh, they're interacting as we speak with the key hospitals uh, in, the, in the East Coast, Midwest, Central. Um, about 15 hospitals in the US uh, do 50% of all the bone marrow transplants. So it's not, not too difficult for us to manage those relationships. Uh, in terms of uh, reimbursement from the insurance companies, that begins the day after FDA approves a product. We've already uh, got inventory, product is already made, and I see no reason why this, this product isn't gonna be used ASAP on, on FDA approval. The Ryan Seal trial for COVID-19 applications is showing promise and is expanding. Um, the Mesoblast share price has recently received a boost from the news that a phase three trial in the US uh, began enrolling patients suffering from the deadliest form of COVID-19 infection, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, we've, we've now learned that Mesoblast has received ethics approval for Australian hospitals to be included in this trial. An interim analysis of the trial's first 90 patients in US hospitals is being done this month. When can we expect the outcome of this analysis? And while it is still early days, when will any results from the larger trial currently occurring in the US and soon Australian hospitals be available? Uh, acute respiratory stress syndrome is a thing that kills you when you've got COVID-19. It's an overactive immune system that tries to deal with the virus in the lungs and while it's doing that, it destroys as a bystander effect your lung tissue. Uh, the mechanism by which it does that is very similar to the mechanism by which Graffa's host disease kills children with that terrible disease. And the fact that our cells are able to turn off the immune system, the ex exuberant immune system in GBHD, gave us a lot of confidence that we'd see the same thing in COVID-19 lung disease. So back in March, April, we actually treated 12 people in the US at uh, New York's Mount Sinai Hospital 
under compassionate care use with uh, just two doses of our cells, Ryan cell. And um, in 75% in of the, the cases, nine out of 12, they not only were able to, to come off ventilators, but they were able to be discharged within 10 days, which was quite a remarkable outcome when you think about that the rest of the people had about an 80% mortality rate in the same hospitals in New York at the time. On that basis, we went to the FDA. We asked to get approval to begin a randomized phase three trial, controlled phase three trial. Uh, they have agreed to a, up to 300 patients, which we are now in the middle of recruitment. And should this phase three trial read out positively, we um, are hopeful that we would get FDA to approve this uh, in, in, a, in a fast track way for treatment of the most severe complication of COVID-19. So um, it's a two-step process. If Ryan's is approved for GVHD, it then becomes available. And if the phase three trial for COVID-19 reads out positively, it will then get what's called a label extension to be used for COVID-19 patients. You're, you're right that an interim analysis was just performed in the first 90 patients. And we um, flew through that. The Data Safety Monitoring Board recommended to continue uh, with the trial. And we have another interim analysis that is scheduled when 45% of the patients have uh, completed 30 days of follow-up. It's, it's possible that if the results continue to be pos positive, uh, the DSMB may recommend early stoppage of the trial. But at this point, we're focusing on completion of the trial and being in a position to present all the data to the FDA and potentially having a label extension for Ryansel in this deadly disease. Of course, as an Australian company, we want to make the, the, the cells available to Australians as well. And that's why we opened up an arm in Australia uh, under, under the ethics approval of Monash Health. So there are several hospitals in Melbourne and in Sydney that will be part of this global trial. Uh, and um, we look forward to, to having the, the therapy available to Australians as well as Americans. Mesoblast Fiscal 2020 results presentation also highlights a number of other product candidates, namely Reviscore for advanced heart failure and MPC06 ID for chronic low back pain. How are these products progressing and when can we expect results for both these phase three clinical trials? Both of those indications are, are really um, blockbuster unmet needs. Uh, they, and they go to the same mechanism of action. We're tackling inflammation. With, with Ryan cell, we're tackling inflammation by intravenous injection of the cell. Uh, by in, in heart failure with Reviscore, we're injecting the cells by catheter directly into damaged heart muscle where there's significant inflammation that causes patients to, to uh, go into in and out of hospital with heart failure and ultimately to die. So it's a, it's a very high level um, mortality disease. With back pain, the product is injected directly into the disc uh, in patients who've got inflammatory severe back pain as an alternative, obviously, to opioids. So the mechanisms are the same. Uh, the products are different and delivered differently. In, the, in both programs are in phase three. Both of them will read out in the fourth quarter of this year. The heart failure program is partnered in China with, with one of China's leading cardiovascular companies, but otherwise on, on full readout in the US where um, we, we, we anticipate partnering the product for heart failure with one of the major heart failure companies in the US. With respect to the back pain product, it's being partnered in Europe with Europe's number one pain company, Grunenthal, uh, and they will uh, initiate a second phase three trial in Europe to complement what we've done in the US. The two trials together would hopefully give us approval in both the US and, and European markets. And, on the back of a positive result, we expect to have a partner in, in the US as well. While still on your last results um, presentation, it made much of Mesoblast progress in increasing commercial scale manufacturing capability. How do you expect to scale up manufacturing and increase cost efficiencies and keep consistency of quality? And also, um, do your proprietary manufacturing processes provide Mesoblast with commercial advantages? Manufacturing is key to having an off-the-shelf product that has got a cost of goods structure that makes this an appropriately profitable uh, enterprise. So um, in, in our first indication, Ryan Cell for children with GVHD, the indication is relatively small, small numbers of patients. We're manufacturing that product in Singapore with uh, a contract manufacturer named Lonza, first-generation product. For um, If we were 
uh, fortunate enough to have a positive outcome and approval for uh, COVID-19 ARDS, uh, that is a much larger volume requirement. And so we have in place uh, already capacity uh, plans to increase the production levels of product for COVID-19, for the numbers of patients with COVID-19. And secondly, uh, implementation of improvements, significant improvements in manufacturing. We have proprietary media that is um, uh, using re recombinant, what's called recombinant growth factors to increase the yield of product by anywhere from, from five to tenfold. And then ultimately we have proprietary use of what it's called three-dimensional bioreactors that again increases production and reduces the manual nature of the manufacturing. So together by increasing yield and reducing um, the, the, the labor uh, costs, the overall cost of goods will, will dramatically be reduced and we'll be able to meet, of course, the commercial requirements of large indications like COVID-19. Mesoblast has built up its product inventory and sales team also in fiscal 2020 in anticipation that some of these phase three trials underway in that year would soon be approved by the FDA. Does the company have ample capacity to further ramp this up uh, if required? We, we're we being very judicious in how we spend our, our dollars. Um, large pharmaceutical companies would invest in sales and marketing 18 months in advance of a, of a product launch. Um, we've got to be very careful how much money we invest. And so uh, judiciously, we've invested about six months in advance of the approval process. Um, and um, we've got about 20 people on the ground. We've got inventory that supports the launch for the next 12 months at least. And if we see success early, we will invest further. We'll expand the sales force and we'll make more inventory. So you've been uh, very prudent, uh, which is always music to shareholders' ears. You've also indicated that the proceeds of the May capital raising would go towards the scale up of manufacturing for projected increasing capacity requirements, the commercial launch of Ryan Seal and some clinical programs. Are you still happy with your capital position now? We are investing in, in uh, additional manufacturing capacity, both uh, outside the US and also inside the US, so that we're in a position to take advantage of positive out readouts in our phase three trials. I think for the time being, I, I am comfortable with the capital position. Uh, there's no doubt that with success will come further opportunities. And I think uh, we can only build on those as they come to hand. Now, if we go to your results, Mesoblast reported a near doubling in revenues to 32.2 million US dollars, about 75% of the latter number was milestone revenues from strategic partnerships. How is the latter revenue source expected to grow further in coming years? I think you're right. The revenue in the last 12 months was increased as a result of both strategic partnership income, as well as a growth in our royalty uh, base for um, the, the Ryan like product that's being sold in Japan by our partner, JCR Pharma for GVHD. I would expect that those royalties will continue to increase in the next 12 months. And I would also expect that strategic partnerships will, will increase, as I've said, um, for transactions on the back of cardiac, back pain, and also the COVID-19 uh, readouts. Those are very large opportunities, particularly in the US market. And I would expect that um, we would enter into commercial partnerships, which will obviously increase the, uh, the revenue stream for us. Well, Silvio, thank you so much for your insights today and all the best with those phase three outcomes and Mesoblast growth strategy for the future. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Now, if you like what you see, please be sure to like and share the video, subscribe to TCN TV and drop us a comment. Tell us who you would like to see next and what you would like me to ask them. Or if you're an investor, please send us an email so we can keep you in the loop with the latest ideas to empower.